What's up guys, my name's Brandon and welcome back to Apple Weekly. This past week was filled with a lot of panic and confusion, but thankfully in this week's episode, my goal is to calm you guys down and discuss the latest in the world of iOS software, but not just iOS software, because after we discuss iOS 16.3, 16.3.1, and 16.4 Beta 1, we're going to talk about the upcoming iPhone Ultra, bad news for the future of the Mac Studio, what to expect at the next Apple Apple event coming most likely this spring, an unusual use case for the crash detection feature, and more. And as always, if you guys want to stay updated with all things Apple, make sure to click that subscribe button down below so you don't miss next week's episode. Okay, so let's start with some good news and some software that we actually did receive this week, and that is tvOS 16.3.1 and HomePod OS 16.3.1. Now, as for what's new, according to the release notes, tvOS 16.3.1 includes quote general performance and stability improvements and as for homepod os 16.3.1 apple said the same thing they just said this update includes general performance and stability improvements and immediately after installing this update on my apple tv and my two home pods the second generation i did notice that my home pod issue with the configuring where it would just be stuck on configuring and you can see right here is one of those for a home pod mini that went away and it was actually normal at first but it didn't take long, maybe a couple of hours before it went right back to saying configuring, even though it's working properly, everything is up to date on it. And that's just an issue with the home architecture upgrade that was introduced and pulled in 16.2. So it seems like the home issues continue to plague myself and almost everyone else I know with multiple home pods and smart devices in the home application. But the good news is Apple is planning to re-release that home architecture upgrade. And we now know that it's coming in iOS. 16.4 and not 16.3.1 like some people were speculating on and this was able to be confirmed with code that reads that the first major API revamp will come with version 16.4 so that's something we can look forward to seeing really as soon as the first beta of 16.4 but the fact that that's coming in 16.4 makes me wonder you know what the big holdup is with iOS 16.3.1 if we're not getting that fix for the home app in that 16.3.1 update. It makes me think it's mostly going to be just security patches, but if that were the case, it seems like we would have already had that by now. So still pretty confusing what Apple's doing right now. Now, another update we got this week was a rare firmware update for the MagSafe Duo. I believe this is the first ever firmware update for the MagSafe Duo. So the version is 10M3063, but in the settings app, you'll see 256.1067.0 as the version number. So you can check yours and see if it's up to date. Now, speaking of delays, another delayed feature that Apple has still not released is Apple Pay Later. Now we now know, thanks to Mark Gurman, that this will be activated server side as most of us suspected. So you don't need a new iOS software update to have Apple Pay Later implemented on your device. So the launch really could come as early as next week since it does not require an iOS update. Although hopefully we get an iOS update next week as well. Now something else new that you might have noticed this week is inside of the music application. We did get a new splash screen for Rihanna for the halftime show at the Super Bowl. And if you did not know, Apple is sponsoring the halftime show. It's the first ever Apple Music halftime show for the Super Bowl, which is pretty neat. And of course, if you go into the music application and go to the browse section, you will see up top, we do have the Super Bowl playlist. And if you go over here, you can see we have this section right here as well, where you can see more about Rihanna and all the uh, the halftime show trailer, everything about the halftime show and Rihanna's albums and playlists. It's also pretty cool because you can see NFL player playlists. So these are actually curated by the players themselves, which is pretty cool. So you can see Travis Kelsey, Stefan Diggs, Devontae Adams, you can see all their playlists right here, the music they listen to, I guess, while warming up. And something else that's been changed this week was actually Apple.com. So Apple's website on both mobile and desktop got a new nav bar element up here. So when you tap on the little menu button right there, you will see all of our sections here. So instead of the icons and that simple look like we had before, it's now just a drop down with just text of all of the products. And if you go ahead and tap on one of them, it will take you to the subsection 
right there. So what do you guys think about this? I personally am not a big fan. I like the previous design better, especially since I've accidentally pressed on that a couple of times, especially while on desktop, when you hover over it, it kind of just comes down and can be kind of annoying, but that is a change on Apple's website. And then as far as an update goes on the battery life and performance on iOS 16.3, I really have no complaints. Really nothing has happened over the past week that is different than what I've talked about on previous Apple Weekly episodes. So really nothing new to report there. I am having this issue right here a lot though. I've talked about it before, but where it just says no weather data, sometimes it'll just randomly say that. But if I lock my device and then unlock it, sometimes it will repopulate or maybe I have to tap into there and then go back and it will populate. But you can see even that didn't fix it this time. So I'm still having issues with weather widget, the weather widget specifically. Other widgets seem to be fine. It's really only that widget and then all of the other issues I talked about previously, but so far this week, nothing new. Okay, so now let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. So first off, this beta drought, as I call it, is nothing new. We've gone a month before without a beta. Just last year, we had that with iOS 15. But what makes this situation interesting and a little bit different is that we have not received a double point update in the meantime, because usually if Apple holds off on betas for like a month, there is at least a double point update in the meantime, in between, you know, somewhere in that month. But we obviously have not seen either one of those since the release of 16.3, which came out back on January 23rd. So you can see one week and then two weeks and then next week will be three weeks. So technically, if it releases next week, it will not be a full month in between. It will just be three weeks. But still, I would highly you know, suspect that we are going to see something next week. It's very rare to not have at least a double point update in the meantime when waiting a month between betas. Now, next week is Valentine's Day right there on the 14th on Tuesday. So maybe Apple will show their love for us with a new software update and some candy on that day. That would be nice. But we could see 16.3.1 or 16.4 beta one next week. At this point, it's really too hard to say what Apple's going to do, but next week is just a new week and more hope that we're gonna get something from Apple. However, I will say that based on history, the double point update usually drops before the next beta. So 16.3.1 should come before 16.4 beta one if history is any indication. So either we see both next week or we just see 16.3.1 mid to late next week and 16.4 beta one the following week. Just keep it locked to my Twitter and of course my channel here on YouTube as well. Make sure you have that bell icon clicked. That way you know when the next software update gets released. All right, so now let's move on to the latest Apple news. And let's start with rumors of a brand new model coming to the iPhone lineup, the iPhone Ultra. So Mark Gurman did originally say that this was coming this year for the iPhone 15 lineup, but now unfortunately he's changed that to next year in 2024 as far as expectations go. So according to this new report, quote, Apple's plan to draw a greater distinction between the Pro and Pro Max has spurred speculation that the company will opt for a new top-end brand, the Ultra. But instead of renaming the Pro Max to the Ultra, Apple could add an even higher-end iPhone above both Pro models, potentially in time for the 2024 iPhone release. At this point, it's unclear how that top of the line model will be different, but it will probably offer further camera improvements, a faster chip, and perhaps even a larger display. There also may be more future forward features, such as finally dropping the charging port. And according to Tim Cook, users could, quote, probably be persuaded to spend more. So I don't know, that kind of goes in line with the future release of an ultra expensive iPhone. He's kind of hinting at that there as well. But I don't know, would you guys really be spending $1,500 plus for a base model iPhone ultra? I guess it depends on the features, but let me know what you think. And speaking of future iPhones, reverse wireless charging is allegedly still in the cards for Apple. And this comes from 9to5Mac, who reports that Apple was supposed to debut this feature with the iPhone 14 Pro, but now Apple engineers are pressing ahead with the development of bilateral wireless charging alongside software optimizations for it. Internally, Apple is developing a unique wireless power out firmware as the basis for the feature. They're also developing a special UI for reverse wireless charging, similar to what is currently used for MagSafe chargers. However, this reverse wireless charging feature could ultimately be delayed again or scrapped altogether. It's been worked on since the iPhone 11 at least, and it's proven to be a challenge 
due to concerns around heat management and charging speeds. So it looks like Apple is still trying to make this work. I honestly don't think it's ever coming, but maybe we will see it. And you know, at least we now know that it's not completely scrapped from Apple's playbook. Now also allegedly coming next year are all new Apple Watch Series X and Apple Watch SE3, both with larger displays than the current models. According to a tech research firm, the Series X will have a 1.89 inch and a 2.04 inch display, which would be five to 10% larger than the Apple Watch Series 8. And the Apple Watch Series X, by the way, that name would have similar branding as the iPhone 10 did, but the name is not confirmed just yet. Next year is just going to mark the 10 year anniversary of the Apple Watch. So it would be kind of cool to see them name it the Apple Watch X Series X. And as far as the Apple Watch SE3, he expects that device to have the same display sizes as the Apple Watch Series 8. So one millimeter larger than the currently sold Apple Watch SE. And this analyst also believes that the next generation Apple Watch Ultra will have a larger 2.13 inch display compared to the current Apple Watch Ultra's display that measures at 1.99 inches. Now let's move on to some bad news about the Mac Studio, which is my personal workhorse for my channel. So according to Mark Gurman, the forthcoming Mac Pro will be similar in functionality to the Mac Studio, and therefore it quote, wouldn't make sense for Apple to offer both an M2 Ultra Mac Studio and an M2 Ultra Mac Pro. He also said, quote, it's more likely that Apple either never updates the Mac Studio or holds off until the M3 or M4 generation. By then, Apple will have an opportunity to better differentiate the Mac Studio from the Mac Pro. So that's pretty unfortunate, but also honestly not too surprising. That's why I spec'd out my Mac Studio so much. Now, as far as an upcoming March Apple event or just a spring Apple event, one of the items we were expected to see was not only the Mac Pro, but also the 27 inch display with mini LEDs. So this is gonna be the follow up or the more pro version of the studio display. But now, according to Ross Young, this display has still not entered mass production, which means that a launch is not imminent. We're probably not gonna see that in time for the spring, which means that we might not even see the Mac Pro in the spring, because I would imagine that Apple wants to release this new Pro display alongside that Mac Pro. So there is still a possibility of seeing this in the spring, but I just think that the odds are now significantly lower than they were just last week. However, we could very well see Apple's AR VR headset get announced at this event. So it's probably going to be an event just around this headset if that's the case. So if we do have an Apple event in the spring, it's most likely going to be themed completely around this headset. It's going to be a big deal. And that would make sense because then for the Worldwide Developers Conference, Apple can openly talk about it and kind of talk to developers about, you know, how to best develop applications for this headset. So I think that would make a lot of sense. Now, another thing we can also expect to see at this event are new iPhone colors, or maybe just one new iPhone color for the iPhone 14 or the 14 Pro. If you guys remember last year at Apple's spring event, they released the Alpine Green iPhone 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max and a regular green color for the 13 and 13 mini. I would love to see kind of like a dark burnt orange color for the 14 Pro series with this frosted back and maybe just a regular looking orange color for the regular 14. And we've seen that rumored for a while. That color has been rumored for like the past two years. So it would be nice to see that instead of a green or a purple or a red like we've seen in the past. But stay tuned for more details on Apple's upcoming spring event. It's pretty rare for Apple to not have an event in the spring. So I'll let you guys know when anything else comes about that over on Twitter and of course here on the channel as well. And then finally, let's talk about a new use case that I never really thought about for iPhone 14's crash detection feature. And that is catching drunk drivers. And the reason I say that is because a 46 year old man from New Zealand was driving drunk and crashed his car into a tree at 1am. And since he had an iPhone 14, it automatically called emergency dispatch. And according to the report, the driver spoke to the dispatcher telling them that the police quote should not worry about it. But since that dispatcher noticed that the man sounded heavily intoxicated, she requested a police patrol car to be sent to the scene as well. And sure enough, once the police arrived at the scene and after the man refused to take a sobriety test and even pushed an officer, he was arrested and charged with refusing a blood sample and assaulting a police officer. And I'm sure DUI will be added onto that 
as well. But think about it. If we didn't have this feature, that crash detection, he most likely would have just drove home or he would have left the car and called somebody to pick him up and he would have just been out there again to drive drunk and potentially kill people. So as much crap as we give crash detection for those false triggers, it is nice to see that it's being used for good. I mean, we've seen it many times over again, but this is a new kind of use case that I didn't think about. But anyways, guys, there you have it. That is the latest batch of Apple news from this past week, along with some updates on the latest iOS 16 changes. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss next week's episode. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.